Oh, man. So the weaknesses of Phantom have been exposed. For those who aren't familiar, Professor Bernard Scholes has joined the team as Chief Research Officer from the 1st of May. He has just given his first interview with the CEO, Michael Kong, of Phantom and announced why he's joined, what he thinks are the weaknesses which need to be patched up and what the priorities are for him. This is huge, guys. As you know, we covered this off on this channel when he was announced as the new Chief research officer for those who aren't familiar professor bernard schultz is considered as one of the god the forefathers right of programming languages in the crypto space he was a faculty member at university of sydney before joining uh across back to phantom right his students were michael kong and kwan the cto over at phantom and he's one of the godfathers of crypto and don't take it from me right let's go ahead and hear what uh andre cronier himself has to say because he's given a few comments himself let's find this and shout out to uh phantom king over king's phantom over at, on uh twitter let's see if we can play this for you guys we've we've got um, Professor Bernard Schultz, he's, he's down there at University of Sydney. Um, I mean, he is he is one of the forefathers of, of programming languages. So he's one of the literal best in the world in this field. And, and, and he that when he first looked at the Ethereum VM, it reminded him of someone that coded a VM that's never looked at a VM before. Wow. So there you go. That's from Andre Cronier himself on how important professor uh, bernard schultz is but what we're gonna do is go on over now to the interview conducted by uh michael kong as you recognize there with bernard schultz and i'm gonna skip through to a few pertinent bits where he covers off what intrigued him to join phantom and also more importantly what does he think of the weaknesses which he can patch up let's have a listen i've got it in uh, times one and a half speed just to rattle through it if you guys want to slow it down do so on your end so we can keep this video nice and concise um just moving kind of a bit onto another topic, what kind of got you interested in working on Phantom? Like, wh why have you decided to join us? So I'm, I'm always intrigued by practice and industry. I mean, I've done this in the past. I have left university for short periods of time or even longer periods of time to work in industry and get inspired by the problems in industry. And I took them back to academia and then worked um, for longer time periods on them, um, write papers, do research with PhDs. And in this case, it's sort of Similar. I'm really intrigued by blockchains and the complexity of um, blockchains because at the end of the day, uh, it's not just one discipline um, which is important in blockchain. It's it's cryptography, it's distributed systems, it's systems research, theoretical computer science research in terms of verification, and then um, we have a lot of software engineering challenges as well. So a lot of different disciplines are super important when it comes to blockchains, and that really excites me. It's, it's the complexity of blockchains which is really intriguing, and um, specifically with Phantom, we have uh, connections. So uh, Quan, the CTO, was my um, honor student in 2006, and Michael was my student as well. So we had personal connections. But besides these personal connections, what really excites me is building a research lab for Phantom. So that really I find a serious challenge, finding young, talented researchers and building innovations which bring the blockchain uh, technology to the next level. I think that that's really exciting uh, from an academic viewpoint. Um, and seeing also that uh, you not just have academic findings, but also these findings are used in practice. Uh, they hopefully then will be fully integrated in Phantom's blockchain. And then Phantom will have an advantage to other blockchains because the latest innovations will be then in the Phantom blockchain. And I think... And that was an important point, guys, to add is he's not just going to be helping himself. I mean, it's a great thing that they they have a figurehead like that. Obviously, with youngsters like Quan and with Michael Kong there at the forefront, they're doing a great job. But you need someone of that pedigree. I look at something like a project like Cardano with Charles Hodgkinson. He kind of brings that academia approach to it. And I think it's good that you to have someone like Professor Bernard there really does give them that kind of kudos, right? Similar to Algorand uh, with Silvio Micali, it gives them that kudos, it gives them that uh, pedigree, uh, probably is a better word for that. But also the fact that he's going to help attract more researchers and talent and build a team, that is really good from a fundamental long-term perspective here for Phantom. A lot of people in our community would be very interested to know, um, with your time at Phantom, what um, like objectives are you looking to achieve, like both academically, theoretically, but also practically in terms of like improving the performance of and security of say like smart contracts in the Phantom network? So personally, I, I feel building the research lab is, is for, will be for me a, a big challenge. But besides building the research lab, I feel there are a lot of technical challenges. And some of these challenges will be related to building a better middleware, building better clients. So there we need to focus on various aspects. And because of some profiling work we did in the past, uh, we see that 
uh, for example, the uh, dealing with storage in smart contracts. So smart contracts are programs and they need some data storage to store the values of variables and so forth. And uh, the problem is that this storage is quite slow at the moment and this will really hamper the transactions per second. And one of the first research objectives will be how can we build a faster and equally secure storage how it's done at the moment in phantom or other blockchains like ethereum and and this will require a lot of experimental research so we have certain trade-offs um, related to cryptography to storage technology and uh, the only way to find the sweet spot in these trade-offs is to do extensive experiments and find out uh, what is the best possible solution for the uh, current uh, program characteristics we observe in phantom but it's important to add there, guys, when you're talking about blockchains of this kind of technical complexity, there isn't a solution out there that exists that you can come and bring in. That's why you need academia, for those that understand. Blockchain is at the, you know, the forefront of technological advancement. So it's using stuff which is brand new even for academia and putting it straight into industry, which is very abnormal that doesn't happen in many other industries right any uh, anything any models you're using in an investor bank or traditional finance is all is stuff that mathematicians and statisticians have figured out many many years ago academia are well past it but with the crypto space with consensus mechanisms with blockchain and the kind of stuff these guys are working on academia has to keep up so like he was saying there, he needs to do a lot of uh experimentations to figure out what the best things are and actually create new academia awesome yeah and um, you know, there's been a lot of talk, there's been a lot of talk about you know a phantom virtual machine or FEM. Um, you know, I've talked a lot a lot about the storage problems as well because I think that is one of the most critical problems to do with the performance of smart contracts on any basic like EVM based chain or smart contract based chain. Um, because you kind of like, but obviously like the work that you're focusing on uh, and the research and development is a lot more than just like a new virtual machine or a new storage. It's actually quite a lot more complicated than that. And all of the like moving parts around like the middleware stack, are, they're, they're all like related to one another. So uh, would you be able to go into a lot more detail um, specifically about like, you know, each like part of the middleware stack and what you're looking to improve upon and like what kind of like performance improvements can like a, um, can the user of a smart contract or, or, or developer of a smart contract experience? Yeah, so, um, well, there are many challenges in the blockchain space and, but, you mentioned the virtual machine. So um, what we see in the current encodings of most of these blockchains that uh, we don't see um, efficient encodings, for example, of uh, programs. So um, the uh, program size of uh, smart contracts is quite large uh, because of a very specific encoding. And the question is, can we use some encoding theory to compress the data on the blockchain. So one of these challenges we see is that you need a very large hard drive to run a client. You, you need gigabytes, or if you have an archival node, you need terabytes just to run the current blockchain. And uh, the data is increasing. It's just the nature of blockchains. It's, it's never stagnating the data consumption. It's always increasing. And the question is now, uh, when we look into more the encoding side, uh, is there a way to flatten the curve? Is there a way to um, ensure that the data consumption grows slower? than what we have at the moment. So that will, for example, improve the network traffic between uh, the nodes. Um, so less data needs to be uh, submitted to all these nodes if we have more efficient encodings. And that will ultimately um, also improve the transactions per second. So it's really a question about speed, security. There are these certain um, trade-offs we have in blockchains and encoding, for example, is, is really one of these issues uh, we need to attack um, in re with respect to, to the virtual machines. Um, we were talking about virtual machines before. Um, virtual machines can be implemented very naively, and then they're quite slow, or they can be implemented quite in a sophisticated manner. And um, there are techniques like just-in-time compilation um, and other very sophisticated techniques. The issue is that we have here a very um, security mission critical environment and this means that if there are some bugs in the virtual machine um, it has really very bad effects for the user of the blockchain so quite often the bottom line is that the simpler the virtual machine is um, the easier it is to prove the correctness and these very sophisticated techniques uh, may give you more speed but you, you pay the price of security and you want to really know what is the trade-off here so what kind of techniques you would like to use to speed up the virtual machine and still have some handle on the correctness of the virtual machine. So there are some sort of experiments we need to do and we need to understand this more in more detail, these trade-offs. But um, yeah, so it's really exciting to do this because blockchains provide a sort of quite unique execution platform and it's quite different to cloud computing or desktop computing. And uh, this gives new innovations for the research community. So what are like kind of the limitations of the EVM? Could you kind of describe how it's like designed, how it like executes smart contracts, 
And what are the limitations and how are you thinking about like overcoming the limitations uh, presented by the EVM, which is the major like virtual machine that like most smart contract platforms use like Phantom, Ethereum, and there's others as well. Uh, could you kind of describe that in a bit of detail? So, I mean, again, they're, they're different domains. So for those who aren't familiar, just to add to here, Phantom is currently EVM compatible. So you can port across Ethereum apps straight to the Phantom ecosystem, right? But Phantom are working on their own virtual machine because there are some weaknesses in the EVM. We know that there's some inherent failings in how that's been built. And that's what he's asking Professor now is how would you improve those? To this problem, but what we see at the moment is the biggest problem uh, for smart contracts is really that uh, the um, execution speed is very bad. And uh, this mainly stems from the problem that storage is super slow. So 90% of the time, virtual machines wait for the ledger to produce the data they request. And, and this means whatever you do to improve the speed of the virtual machine will not really help because the bottleneck is storage. In computer science, there's something called Amdahl's law. And the idea of this law is if you improve um, a, a small portion of the execution time, the overall speed up will be not so good. You want to find the portion, the most dominating um, portion of the runtime, and you want to improve that uh, portion to improve the total speed of the system. And, and in, in the execution of virtual machines, it is really storage, the biggest issue at the moment. And that is the most imminent um, uh, problem to be solved um, related to, to the virtual machine. Cool. So there you have it, guys. We won't watch the full thing there. I'll leave the link in the description for you guys to go watch it. It's on the Phantom Foundation website. But overall, this is really promising, right? The fact that they've gone ahead and got themselves a really good figurehead. I mean, it really they're really creating a nice environment over at Phantom. They've got the the youngsters who have built the team, have done a good job in Michael Kong and Quan and Simone in the from C, the CMO. But then on top of that, they now you know we know Andre Cronje is still working on projects, right? There's no denying that. We know he's still working on FUSD. From what we can see here, they've then gone ahead and introduced introduced Professor Bernard to go and build a team of researchers and really critique and improve that EV, uh, the FVM that they want to build out and work on the middleware stack and really solve this storage problem. And this storage problem is not something that just relates to Phantom. We know Cardano are working on the same thing. They're working on their Cardano improvement proposal, which is to try shorten uh, the amount of uh, the size of the transactions, right, with all the blocks that you have to carry forward. So we know that they're keeping an eye on that. And this is just another good step from a fundamental perspective. It'll give them that kudos, it'll give them that leverage. And it's good. Sometimes it's important not just to look at the price, but to look at what a project is doing to make sure they're future proof, right? The, fan the fact that Phantom has had zero downtime is super fast as some of the lowest gas fees, but they're still working on their consensus mechanism. They're still trying to reduce uh, the storage load and the bloat to stop themselves from ever getting to a situation like Ethereum, which is getting quite mission critical now and the system could fall down. So it's always good that they're regularly servicing, improving with the state of the art technology because that's always one of the challenges with layer one solutions, right? You're only as good as the technology available when you launch, right? That was the thing. When Ethereum launched, it was state of the art, but very quickly it didn't become state of the art. Now you've got Avalanche, you've got Phantom, you've got Algorand, all with superior Solana, all with superior tech to Ethereum. So Ethereum has to now go and change their engine while flying at 40,000 feet to, from proof of work to proof of stake and try to, imp, it, you know, change all these things when you've got a network with over 100 billion in total value locked. That's very difficult, right? It's very difficult for them to do. But that's the same thing with these layer ones. What if in two, three years time, there's a new layer one solution with the new technology from the future? right? But that's why you're seeing the best layer one solutions are those that can take new academia, new um, technological advancements and quickly push it into their existing layer one. So even a new layer one, which is spun up today, would not have superior tech to yours. That's the idea is who can keep up with the new tech advancements and keep um, keep re, uh, re-innovating on their existing platform without getting too stagnant and allowing a new uh, a new entrant into the market. So there you have it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed this quick breakdown of Bernard Schultz's first interview at Phantom. Don't forget to smash up the like button and subscribe if you appreciate it. Go watch a few videos, which I'm going to link up here. And I'll see you in the next one.